Hey, what's happening guys? Hope you all are doing well. This is Tito back with another video. Today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how is the official Cypher OS on Redmi Note 3. Last time I flashed it, there was some bugs and huge thanks to the developer Miguel for making this from official. So let's get into it. Download links for ROM and G apps are in the description box below. But don't head on over to the description already, wait until you watch the full video. As you can see, I am on official Lineage OS 14.1 right now, so let me boot the phone into TWRP recovery. As you can see, I am using official latest TWRP recovery 3.2.1.0 here. So now hit wipe and check cache, Dolphic cache, system and data as usual. Once that's done, go back, go back, hit install, locate the ROM and GApps file in your storage, now select them and swipe to confirm flash. Once the flashing is done, hit reboot system. Here is the boot animation of this ROM. As it's booted up into the system, let me complete the setup process. I'm trying to restore my Google App Data Backup over here. And it was stuck in this restore dialog for more than 20 minutes, which is not normal at all. And the loading bar of restore comes up and goes. It is just stuck in here saying restore as you can see. Consider this as bug number 1. So from this point I had to long press the power button to force reboot the device. Once it rebooted it showed the lock screen then I had to set it up again. Google app data backup and restore was not working so I had to select setup as new. And luckily my account is added. So let me complete the setup again. This time it worked fine. And we have Luna Launcher as default launcher over here as you can see. This is how it looks like. Google Now card should work fine. Tap and hold functionality working fine. Here is the launcher settings if you are into that. Yes you can change icon shapes. Let me disable app suggestions. As you can see, Google App Data Backup is restoring my apps already. So at least it worked now. This is how the quick settings panel looks like. Here are some more things like night light and stuff. We have screen record and screenshot option over here. So that's cool. The torch is working fine as of now. So let me go into settings and system. All the customizations of this ROM is here in gestures, buttons and tuning. That's all. I will be showing them to you later. So let me go into the about section. On the top it says AOS CP. Cypher OS version is 5.3 here. The stock kernel over here is shadow kernel. So the battery life should be good enough. And security patch is March 5th, 2018. So that's awesome. So now let me go back inside tuning. We have screenshot, screen record, resolution and auto brightness icon option. Let me enable it. And you can set the screen record resolution up to high quality 720p but no 1080p though. Moving on to buttons. Let me turn on navigation bar. We have the home button animation like Google Pixel in navigation bar, so that's cool. Now let me turn off navigation bar and you can customize home, menu and back button actions from here. Here as you can see, long pressing home button for Google Assistant is working fine. And we have wake with volume keys option. 
playback control with volume keys option and swap buttons option. Now let me move to gestures. Here as you can see double tap to sleep is working fine. And we have swipe 3 finger gesture for screenshot which is working fine here. And I can't delete it from here. So let me just swipe it out. Here I noticed another bug. The navigation bar somehow turned back on where it is actually disabled as you can see. If I turn it back on and off, it goes for a moment and comes back in after I lock and unlock the screen. So that's annoying. And from quick torch, we can long press power button to turn on torch like nitrogen OS, but this does not actually work. As you can see, and we have the software buttons again. Gah, this is annoying. I think it is coming right after locking and unlocking the device. Again, as you can see, navigation bar is off, but we still have them over here. Let me turn it back on and off. From system updates, you can check if there is new builds, I guess. I don't know if it supports OT updates yet. So let's jump into display settings now. As you can see, night light or night mode is actually working fine here. So no issues with that. Adaptive brightness is working fine. Here we have color manager if you want that. As you can see, it turns the whole UI dark. So it's working fine. And we have some color options. But I like this pixel color. Let me reduce the display size. And here I try to set up the face unlock. First time it shows the camera isn't available. Never seen this. But on second attempt it did work. There is no option to enable quick face unlock though but let me try. And as you can see it does not unlock the screen automatically. You have to swipe the lock screen up manually after it detects your face. In battery we have charging alert. And you have option to change battery icon to landscape, circle or stuff like that. Let me change it to circle and it worked. In sound settings we have option for ambient play which is from pixel 2 I guess which recognizes the song if it is being played around you but I am not sure if it works fine or not and Geo 4 g fault calling is working fine here as you can see and now I see over here the torch toggle looks disabled and it doesn't work as you can see and now I try to open the stock camera app. It just says camera has stopped, so not working. Let me open Google camera and see. And it's the same, it says camera has stopped too. So lot of bugs still are present in this ROM. In my opinion, even though user interface of this ROM is smooth, it is not quite there yet to be a good daily driver. I did flash the previous builds of this ROM too. You can watch those videos from the cards and pretty much most of them had bugs. So that is just sad for us. But as of now, let's hope that it becomes stable enough to at least use it as daily driver in future. In my frank opinion, don't flash this ROM as of now if you are willing to have a good experience. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And it turns out a little disappointing for me at least because the ROM is official but it has a lot of bugs in my opinion at least. If you are watching this Mr. Developer please pick this. It will be very helpful for a lot of guys who try custom ROMs like me. So please fix these issues. So that's it that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching guys. Hit the big thumbs up if you like this and subscribe to the channel right here if you loved my work. This has been Tito, I will see you in the next one. 
Bye-bye now.